Now, I said that the dot product has many, many different applications, but kind of for the sake of time, we're just going to focus on a second one by way of example. I want you to think back to extension one and which of that, those other results we focused on that really heavily relied on the dot product. The dot product's in there all the time. Projections. Projections, right. So this is going to be application two. <clears throat> so um, this bit's a bit tricky because um, having all come from different classes, I know for a fact that everyone handled projections slightly differently. And that's actually for a good reason. There's lots of different ways to compute projections, or lots of different formulas, much like this, that are all equally valid for the projection. And just like with the dot product in the first place, uh, it kind of depends, like, which one of these formulas will I use? Depends what information that I have. Some gets provided to me, it makes it easier to use. Like, if you knew what theta was, just go and do this one, right? It's much easier, right? But if you don't, then you go for this one. Same deal with projections. So what I'm going to ask you to do, I'm going to give you 30 seconds, and you're welcome to get the help of the brain of your, the person next to you if you like. I want you to see how many ways you can remember, and I'll give you a spoiler, there's at least three that are all useful. How many ways do you remember to compute the projection of, say, A onto B? And I'll give you a hand just so, in case you can't remember the... Um, notation, right? When we're computing the projection of A onto B, B is like the base vector, right? So we put it down here, a little bit like in log notation, that's the base of the log. So this is the base of the projection, and here's the thing being projected onto it, okay? What do you remember? Can I give you half a minute to think what's in your brain? Jot something down. If you can jot down more than one, bonus points, have a shot. I'm really happy. I see several different formulas for the projection of A onto B, and that's great. I'm going to go for three of them, as promised today, uh, this morning. Mm, that should be enough space for now. What we're going to do is, we could sort of go round and round for a little bit to see what your suggestions are, but in the interest of time, where I'm going to start with is, the one, that, um, <clears throat> the one that I love in my head the most is the one that's the most succinct, the one that uses the least notation. That doesn't make it the best one, but it is the easiest to remember. Uh, and where it starts is with a dot product. So the first thing that you can see here is you put in A, and then you take the dot product. Now I want you to think, I've given you a bit of a clue. If you've got more than one written, I want you to look at your page. Which one is the shortest one? Which one uses the least symbols? If you can pick that one, can you tell me what comes next, Zhao? B hat. B hat. Unit, unit. The unit vector of B. Right, does that make sense? Do, who, who's got this one? I haven't finished it, by the way. Who's got this one as one of the ones that they've got? Like a third of the room? OK, good. It's not finished yet. What's, the, what's on the end? B hat. B hat again, right? Yeah. I always found when I was learning these, <clears throat> because unlike you guys, stay with me, you 12. Unlike you guys, vectors was not in my year 11 or 12 uh, maths course. I learned, I was introduced to vectors at uni, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. And I remember looking at this formula and thinking, why, why so many B hats? Like, can't we like, combine these in some way? And of course, the answer is no, you cannot, because this thing really has two pieces to it. I almost said components, but that's not what I mean. Uh, this thing here, that was a terrible curly brace. I'm going to write it again. This thing in the brackets, that dot product, right? It is actually a separate object that you learned about. Do you remember? What is this thing called? Scalar. It's the scalar projection. If you cannot remember this, or even if you can, please label that as such. This is the scalar projection. And just to jog your memory, the whole idea is if you've got A onto B, here's my A and B again, right? The idea is if I've got a base vector, and I look at some other vector, what's the length of the shadow? This is our key metaphor, right? What's the length of the shadow of A onto B? If you can imagine this ruler, casting a shadow down onto here in an orthogonal direction, right? What's the length of that shadow? And a length, a length is just scalar. Do you remember that? Okay, and of course, when you do a something dot something, you just get a number out, right? So there's the scalar projection out the front. And then what effect does it produce when we then multiply by B hat at the end here? Fantastic. It gives me the vector projection. That's the whole thing. And the way it does that is you get this number, which is a length, and then you say, now apply that length, or that magnitude is maybe a better way to say it, apply that magnitude in the 
direction of wherever b is going, right? We make it b hat because when we then ignore the length, all you get is the direction out of this. Does that make sense? So I'm going to say apply that magnitude, the one we got in the scalar projection, apply that magnitude in the direction of b. Okay, so that's great. Handy dandy, right? But this is not the only way to do this. And actually, I'm going to suggest in multiple contexts, even though this is nice and succinct when you look at it, it's not always the most succinct way to work the actual projection out. And the reason why is because <laughs> this formula is kind of cheating. Cheating, right? Um, this b hat that appears twice, right? It actually disguises a fair bit of work, right? Because you've then got to calculate uh, the length of b. You've got to divide through by that, uh, the magnitude I should have said. And then you have to multiply it by itself here, right? So it gets, it gets squared. So actually, there's a bit of a mess of working that's hiding underneath here. I'm going to show you exactly what that looks like. But that's the reason why I'm about to give you another version for this, and I hope several of you have got this, that looks, looks worse. Um, but actually, it's um, well, a couple of different ones. It may end up being less work for you. So. Let's have a go at doing another different form. As per uh, what I rubbed off on the board, the table that's right at the start, right? Um, when you do a dot b, one of the ways to work out a dot b hat, one of the ways to work out what it is is to use trigonometry, right? Use trigonometry. So what would that look like if I were to use the trigonometric formula for the dot product here? Think about this. In here, I'm going to say uh, I need the magnitude of 1 Multiply by the magnitude of the other, so that would be, in this case, magnitude of a, magnitude of b hat, and then what do they get multiplied by? Cos of the angle between. So I'm just going to call that cos theta. And then you've got b hat hanging out over here. Okay. Now, the reason why this can give us something useful is because there's a part of this line here that is very easy to evaluate, right? Which is the part that's easy to evaluate? It's the magnitude of? b hat, because by definition, it's a unit vector. The magnitude of a unit vector is a, it's a, it's a unit, that's why I call it a unit vector. So that's their one. So what I can get is this, uh, magnitude of a cos theta, and then b hat still hanging out the end here, right? So what have I got at this moment? I've got two ways to work this out. This looks a little longer and more awkward, but as compared to the first one, right? If you've got the angle between these two, sweet, just go for it. Use this one. Okay, it's going to be a bit simpler. All right, so that's our second form. And then our third form. I find this one the weirdest form. Um, I'm going to write it again up here. When I first encountered it years and years ago, I was like, why would anyone write a formula like this? It's like I'm trying to make it hard to remember and like obtuse and long, but it turns out this is often a very efficient way to do it. Uh, I want you to remember, um, how do we work out b hat again? I even said it right at the start. If you've got b, how do you work out b hat? B yeah, you, you divide, well, you're going to work out the magnitude of b, and then you divide through by that, remember? Now, I'm actually having to do that twice. So watch what happens when I just kind of include that working in my definition. What I'm going to have here is, going off of my first line, I've got this dot product, right? It's going to be a, and then instead of writing b hat next, I'm going to write it's b. What am I dividing by again? Magnitude of b. Is that OK? So that's there. And then, um, and then I do the same thing. I've got b hat out the end here as well. Here's b divided by its magnitude. Great. Now, the reason why this ends up being useful to me is, hold up for a second. These are just scalars. Do you agree? So because they're just scalars, you can just kind of factor them out. You can sort of move them wherever is appropriate to yourself. So what I can do is I can say, oh, I've got uh, a dot b up here in the top. So far, so good. On the denominator, these two scalars here, I can combine them. Now, it's not immediately obvious why combining them might be useful, but I want you to think about how is it, what formula do I use to work out the magnitude of any vector? Uh, we did it here. I, I'm doing Pythagoras, which involves square roots. But because you're squaring a square root, you're like, oh, things will just come out in the wash, right? So think about this. Maybe you want to put this, do I have an appropriate color? Here we go. 
Then you want to put this off on the side here, right? Um, I'll sneak it in here. <clears throat> if we were to work this out, what I'm doing is I'm working out the magnitude, which is the square root of, you take each of these components, right? Uh, the x and the y and the b. Right, you've got that, right? And then you square that thing. Do you agree? So this gets rid of the square root. So if you have a look at what's underneath the square root sign, underneath the radical sign is actually the proper name, uh, you're multiplying the x component of b by itself, and the y component of b by itself, and the z component of b by itself. Uh, we have a way to do that, right? We have much more succinct notation for doing that. It actually looks like, on the denominator here, you're taking the dot product of a vector against itself, because you're comparing the x's and the y's and the z's with yourself, right? So that's why, oh, I'm just going to sneak it in on here. We can write the denominator as b dot b. And whoever wrote this formula, obviously, b was their favorite letter of the alphabet. And you can see why. When you first look at this, you're like, why? Why would you do this? Like, this looks so nice and neat. But the whole point is, this makes easier, like you see this mess that I, dealt, I, had, I have to deal with if I use the unit vector form um, is going to be easier to deal with here. Okay? So can I ask you to write down uh, a pair of vectors for me in column form? Um, 4, 2, negative 3. 4, 2, negative 3. I'll write this down shortly. I just need to make space for myself. That's vector A. And vector B is going to be, I'll make, give you a nice and easy one, uh, negative 1. 1, 1. So A is 4, 2, negative 3. <clears throat> Excuse me. And B is negative 1, positive 1, positive 1. Can you go ahead and work out the projection of A onto B for me? You've got three formulas here. You can use, here's 1, here's 2, and here's 3. You can use whichever one you like. Uh, in fact, if you get there quickly, I'd like you to try and use more than one so that you can confirm for me that they all work, right? I mean, we, hopefully we're content that this is true, but have a go. Whichever one you think is the easiest, go for it, and then try a second one, whichever one you want. All right, I'm pretty happy. I've gone around and I've seen, uh, I've seen people attempt their second use of a second formula. One, two, three, you can choose, um, which is a good sign, and maybe you're starting to see the comparison. You're like, oh, I know eventually I'm doing the same amount of work, but is, is I, I'm, am I more geared towards one than the other. I'm going to do this in kind of reverse order. I'm actually going to go straight to my third one here. And some people use a slightly different version of this formula, which is fine. We'll get the same result. I've got A and I've got B. I don't, I'm not given the angle between them. Um, I can go ahead and work out the unit vector for B. It's not difficult. Uh, but let's see what happens if we just use this third one here, because I'm highlighting how funny it looks. But watch how it works out. A dot B on B dot B times b. Let's have a go. I'm in column form, right? So can you tell me what am I going to get on my numerator here when I do the dot product a dot b? I'm going to get, yep, negative 4 plus 2 minus 3. Cool. And you can obviously simplify that in a second. On my denominator, I'm going to do b against itself. So it's actually just everything squared. Do you agree? So it's just going to be, in this case, 1 plus 1 plus 1. Even if they were messier numbers, it's not hard to just square everything. Is that OK? And then I then just say the b vector along the end here, which is negative 1, 1, done. Does that make sense? Now, I think it is really important, by the way, and I noticed this as I was walking around. Some people have gone straight to simplifying this fraction out the front, and very likely have actually done it correctly. I still don't like it. <laughs> I don't want you to jump to, here's my answer straight away. Because again, so many times the recent assessment was a good reminder of this, right? Number one, if you get this wrong and I just see your simplified version, it's just flat wrong. I can't see that you actually knew what you were doing and made some minor error, OK? Secondly, I want you to communicate that I can see where this came from. I instantly can tell, oh, this person was doing two dot products. I, I know what formula they were using, because you've got many to choose from. Does this make sense? So even though it is materially easy to work out that this is going to be what in front? What's our coefficient? Negative 5 on 3. Even though it's, I think, pretty easy for a lot of you to do that in your head, I'm going to encourage you not to. Okay? There's my answer. Are you happy with that?